Today's video is all about dimensional processing. So uh, specifically reverb, we want all the different elements in this mix to sound like they're coming from a cool acoustic space that has some character of its own and that can add some flavor to all these different sounds. Because right now, you know, we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got this live performance and all these instruments and things and, and we can tell that you know, there was a tracking session, all these musicians were playing together, but in a controlled environment like the, the Stanton Audio Studio uh, on campus. So what we want to be able to do is give this more of a feel like it's coming from a performance hall of some sort. Now it's true that just like any of these effect plugins that we have set as inserts across our audio tracks, that we can just simply, you know, add reverb to these, you know, based on whatever selection and whatever your preference of reverb plugins is. And we can add those things to each individual audio track. The issue with that is, one, it's not very efficient, and two, it's uh, it, it, reverb is one of those things that is very computer heavy. It takes a lot of energy on your computer to be able to do that. And the more audio tracks you have with the more reverb plugins, the more likely you are to have some sort of crash in Pro Tools. So instead of adding reverb to every single thing that we want to have reverb on, we're going to instead create an extra pathway. We're going to create a new audio track that doesn't actually have audio. We're going to just set the reverb there and what we're going to do is send all these different audio signals from the audio tracks that we have to the reverb to add a little bit of that reverb flavor to it um, and, and then that way we only have one reverb plugin running and each one of these audio elements can share the same reverb so it, it shares the same color, the same sound, as opposed to different sounding reverbs on, on every single thing. So uh, this is the preferred method for um, professional mix engineers, and, and the more audio tracks you have, the more, th the more this will make sense. Um, but it might as well go through the process here. Um, so we're going to create a new track, uh, shift command in. <clears throat> or we'll go to track and new, and in this case we want a stereo aux input. And the reason why we're choosing stereo is because reverb is um, pretty much a, a stereo effect. You know, we want, um, if an instrument, even if it sounds like the saxophone, for example, is panned hard to the right, um, and, and the main part of that sound is going to be coming from the right side when we're listening, um, if it was to reverberate around the room, those echoes, those reflections off the surfaces of the space that they're in would, would bounce all around. So we would hear that on both sides. So stereo auxiliary input. And here's that aux input. I'm going to move it to the other side of my master just as a visual sort of separation from everything else. And I think I'm going to change the color of it too to just be like this. Uh, uh, let's see, what what don't we have? Um, we don't really have a yellow. I'll make it a bright yellow. Okay. And what an auxiliary input is, is sort of just like an alternate pathway for audio to go down. Um, and, but you don't actually house audio itself on there. So if I look at the edit window, command equals, um, I don't have an area to actually put a waveform. There's, so no audio is actually going to be recorded or imported or, or live in this space. Back to the mix window with command equals. Uh, I'm going to change the name of this also to say reverb because that's kind of its only purpose right now. Okay, so the analogy that I like to, to make with this is that we need to send our audio on a bus. Think of a yellow school bus. We need to send audio on a bus to pick up some reverb. And then we're going to determine how much reverb are we going to bring back with us on that bus. Um, and that'll make a little bit more sense in just a second. So um, I need to send, let's say I'm going to send the saxophone just to, to be able to hear this easy. I'm going to send the saxophone on a bus, and it can be any bus that I want. I'm just going to choose the first one available, bus one and two, because we're doing a stereo thing here. Okay, and this little fader is going to pop up. I'm going to move it to the side just for a second, but I'm not going to get rid of it. So I'm sending the saxophone audio on a bus. And this is very similar to what we did in class with the AVM headphones, only we're, we're sending, instead of sending the headphones, we're sending to this reverb aux input. Um, okay, so I'm sending on a bus, but I need to make sure that my reverb is set to receive the same bus. So my input here, 
where it says no input, I have to change that to be the same bus, one and two. All right, super important. We wouldn't be able to do things otherwise. Um, and then think about this. If I'm sending bus, um, sending the saxophone on a bus, and the reverb is set up to receive it, what we actually have to do is create the reverb. Otherwise, this, this aux input is doing nothing for us. So this uh, insert spot on the aux input track is where we're going to actually have reverb. Uh, I usually choose the D-verb, and I like the, the plate, like a medium plate um, is a good one for me. Um, that's sort of like my go-to spot, and then I might change the decay time and stuff like that, but that's a nice, um, you could also choose from, you know, a list of presets and stuff. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you can kind of, these descriptions will go along with sort of the genre that you're looking at, so we're sort of like this um, upbeat indie pop song so you might choose like a bright plate or something like that um, I'm just gonna go this method okay uh, another important so now we're, we have the routing all set up so I'm sending audio on this bus we're receiving it here and it's gonna have some reverb in order to hear these sort of things we want to solo the saxophone but also the reverb otherwise we won't hear the reverb come in now I'm going to start playing back the track um, during a spot where there's some saxophone. Let's find that. So there's a lot of saxophone in this area. Now what you're going to notice is that there's at first going to be no reverb sound. And then when I adjust the amount, uh, the send level, you remember this is like with your headphone unit. We put it way up to zero just so the headphones hear everything. We're going to start increasing this and you're going to hear reverb coming in. So let's do that. So there it is dry and then with reverb added back in. So you can hear how that makes a huge, a world of difference, right? Now let's say that we're gonna, you know, wash, rinse, and repeat, right? With the with every single thing on here, um, all of them are gonna be sent over to the reverb. Um, but I might say, with the exception of the bass, um, I don't necessarily need a bunch of low frequencies bouncing off the walls and stuff. That's usually something we try to avoid. So I may not do that with the bass, and I may not do it with the drum overheads because they're already sort of acting a little bit of of like a reverb. Um, but uh, all the other ones, uh, I'm going to dial some of that stuff in. Um, so let's go ahead and make a selection of what we want to add the reverb to. So vocals, guitar, kick, all the way through the drums with the exception of the overhead. I'm not going to do it on the master either. So now um, it should be shift and option to apply what I'm doing to all selected tracks. And then send to bus 1-2. And there they go. They're all set up for those tracks that I had selected. So you can see right now I've got this send level fader that pops up and it's color coordinated to match with the vocals. Um, and if I switch things around, the color will change um, and then I can make adjustments to those. Um, but that's a rather tedious and inefficient way to go through each one of these. So if I wanted to change how my approach to this, um, I could view a small miniature fader for each one of these things. If I just go up to view, um, and then expanded sends and then choose um, which send setting I want to show and look every single one that I've got here is in send spot A so that's what I'm gonna do I'm going to show expanded send A and then I've got a little fader for each one of these now um, so all I have to do is sort of go through um, and start throwing up uh, <laughs> throwing up I have to start potting up uh, my reverb on each channel so let's go ahead and do that um, one by one. I'm going to start at the beginning of the tune, uh, and I'm going to start with drums, and I'm going to start just adding reverb to those things.
You know, I think I'm gonna change my mind and see what happens when I add it to the overhead a little bit. So let's send the bus one two here also. And then I can turn these off real quick by just like removing the reverb. Check out the difference. It just adds a little bit of character, you know? I'm going for a subtle approach here. I'm not overdoing it. But it certainly is different. And it's especially different, you know, when you hit the stop button then you can sort of hear the reverb tails and everything. Um, so I'm going to start it back at the beginning, um, and now I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to do this with the guitar. All right, so let's hear what it sounds like without the reverb. Just sort of like rounds it off and takes some of the edge off of it. All right, so I think I've made some positive changes there. It's always about checking before and after, too, to make sure that you're doing things in, the, in a positive way. Um, so experiment. Make sure that you're able to successfully create this, um, uh, this auxiliary input and get the routing all set up. So sending on a bus, making sure that the aux input is receiving that bus and has a reverb, um, and then seeing if you can make adjustments to those send levels um, in this method. Um, and you'll be right on track. After this, it's pretty much going to be um, bouncing to disk and exporting, and we're going to be good to go. Thanks for watching. See you next time.